מגדיל שם את שפת שלוש Very good morning. Welcome to the fifth day of the 30th certificate. Welcome to the fifth day of the 30th certificate course in IPR applications in higher education institutions, jointly organized by Shri Bindan City College Nagpur and Matri Sivasan Institute of Social Work Nagpur. Today we will have two lectures. First is on ethical and unethical uses of online resources and second on how to make your research work plagiarism free. Uh, both the lectures will be engaged by the same resource person. Today's resource person is Dr. Lucky Rabhadabhi, who is deputy librarian and head at the library of the Department of Maharashtra National Law University, Nagpur. He is MA, MLIC, GTCA, LLB, PhD, and he has also pursued Diploma in Cyber Laws Certification in IPR, and certificate in Tamil and Spanish languages. He has 20 year, 20 years of librarianship experience in national institutes like Infinet, CEPT, NIFT, JVBI, and 14 years experience in national law universities, including Gujarat National Law University and Maharashtra National Law University. He has published many articles and conference papers. He has one book in his credit and title. Indian Law Librarianship, published by Satyam Law International Law School, in no 2020. Sir, I welcome you on this virtual platform and request you to take this over. Over to you, sir. Lakhir, sir. Lakhir, sir, please start. Very joint party. Sir, please proceed. Proceed to your session. Sir, sir, baat ho gaya. Sir, oh, unmute nahi kar pa rahe Start kar. Acha. Ab unko host bana dijiye. मैंने सर को कोहोस बना दी क्या? हाँ तो सर तो शायद वो डिस्कनेक्ट हो गया ना यहाँ पे दिख नहीं रहा है। ओके पर आप सर से बात कर लीजिए क्योंकि यहाँ से मैंने तो उनको अनुरोध कर दिया है
Now this is this uh, session start to do. Nothing, sir. Sir, am, am I audible? Am I audible, sir? Nothing, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Participant friends, sorry for inconvenience. Uh, sorry, having some technical issue. So, shortly we will join to us. Um. By the meantime, we will see a video that we are supposed we are supposed to see in the third session. Awesome. National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources, New Delhi. In this video, we are going to talk about the legal and ethical issues in digital libraries. As we know, a number of digital libraries are being created, and many of the traditional libraries are being converted to digital libraries. Legal and ethical issues is one of the important aspects that we need to take care of when digital libraries are being created. As we know, in the traditional libraries, there are a number of legal and ethical issues that we have been uh, associated with, and the same applies to digital libraries in different, uh, on a different scale. For example, in the uh, traditional libraries, copyright has been one of the major issues when it comes to photocopying, 
of a uh, printed document in the library, or uh, when it comes to dissemination or distribution of multiple copies, the copyright uh, laws are uh, coming into effect. In the digital libraries, again, here copyright is uh, very important, and one needs to take care of the copyright uh, uh, laws. Now, copyright laws vary from one country to country, but then most of the countries are signatories to the Berne Convention that governs the international copyright law. So, it is very important that the creators of digital library and the users of digital library have an understanding of the uh, existing copyright laws. One of the clauses that has been applicable to the uh, libraries in the, uh, with respect to the copyright law has been the fair use clause. As all of us know, the fair use clause allows materials to be copied for yeah, yeah. research purposes by individuals. The fair use clause is applicable to the digital content as well. But then users need to make use of the copyrighted work in an appropriate manner. Now, when in digital libraries, the most of the digital libraries existing today are a conversion of the print or the traditional libraries. Although there are a number of modern digital libraries that are uh, coming up, uh, when, but then there are many digitization projects that are involved in the conversion of print to digital. So in the conversion of print to digital, uh, we need to keep in mind the uh, copyright laws. So what is the material that we are converting from print to digital? Is this material uh, covered under the, under the copyright law? If it is covered in, under the copyright law, then have we taken the necessary permissions from the copyright holders or the authors of this work? And if fair use clause applies to that work, use that or apply that fair use uh, clause in an appropriate manner. So, uh, we need to keep in mind about obtaining the necessary permissions for digitizing of the copyrighted materials. We also know that in digital libraries, uh, or with respect to digital content, other than the term uh, digital content, the libraries are also licensing digital content. They are having an era when libraries were acquiring uh, digital contents on CD-ROM, and this content belonged to the libraries or they were retained by the libraries. Now, in the uh, recent years, what we are witnessing is the, the licensed, uh, when the libraries license digital content. So when, license, when the libraries license digital content, the uh, agreements are entered into between the publisher and the libraries or between the libraries and the content providers. So it becomes very important for the libraries to honor them those agreements and also see to it that there is no violation in the agreement clauses either by the library or by the users of the library. The users have to be sensitized about the different clauses in the agreement, especially the do's and don'ts with respect to the content. Uh, with, again, with respect to what can be downloaded, how much can be downloaded, uh, for example, many of the publishers have this clause on systematic uh, downloading. No uh, publisher allows a user to systematically download the content and retain it at the library or the individual level. So the users need to be aware about how much can be downloaded from the libraries. The next uh, important ethical issue is with regard to plagiarism. The digital uh, content is subject to easy manipulation. The uh, content, as we know, can be easily copied and uh, it, it can be uh, pasted. And there have been many instances of uh, authors or uh, users downloading such content and misusing it. So it is, uh, it is ethical to claim someone else's content as one's own content. We, we need to again sensitize users, make users aware that uh, this kind of an unethical practice is unacceptable. Uh, and, and 
the, uh, the, the libraries have to devise mechanisms to uh, ensure that uh, this kind of uh, uh, plagiarism or copy or misrepresenting someone else's content as one sort to, should be avoided by the users. Then comes the illegal materials. Now, uh, again, the illegal materials, there are abundant uh, amount of material which are inappropriate for public consumption or public display. The and more so in the uh, digital world. So the libraries need to identify such content and see to it that these do not become part of the digital library that the library is creating. While if the, the freedom of expression is very important, but there should be a balance between the freedom of expression and the user's right uh, should be protected from the illegal and harmful material. This was true in the print world also where in, during the selection process, libraries had to take care of uh, not selecting inappropriate content in the libraries. The same thing applies to the digital world where in the uh, digital library creators have to see to it that illegal content is not posted on the uh, website or in the digital library. Uh, another issue that uh, is important in the uh, digital world is respect with respect to the pattern privacy. In the uh, print world, uh, the tracking of the user's behavior or understanding user's uh, behavior was uh, challenging. But in the digital world, it becomes very easy to track the online behavior of uh, users. The uh, log analysis can be uh, that the weblog analysis will show how the users have been using the digital content. And with the availability of Web 2.0 tools, the, the users uh, interacting or communicating about uh, the uh, content or about use of digital content is obvious. So it is up to libraries to again inform the users about their uh, the, the possible scrutiny of their online behavior and also see to it that the privacy of the users are not compromised in any manner. We should remember that the uh, online behavior is accessible by publishers and publishers that keep track of how the licensed content is being used by the uh, users of this content with respect to the number of downloads and from which institute or which IPB. Uh, information is downloaded is easily scrutinized by the uh, publishers or even the government. So, informing the pu publisher, uh, the, the users about the uh, use about, about the use pattern and also the monitoring of uh, the possible monitoring of, of this content should be informed to the publisher or, or rather the user. And the uh, lastly, we ta also talk about the cultural sensitivities. Uh, all content. Uh, may not be accepted, acceptable to everyone, every one of the users. And we know that most of the digital libraries of today are international and the content can be accessed globally. When it comes to the depiction, depiction of pictures and other audiovisual content, the creators of digital libraries have to keep in mind uh, how this can affect the cultural sensitivities of uh, the different communities across the globe. And one needs to uh, consider how this digital library con content will affect others and ensure that uh, only such content goes into the library which do not affect the cultural sen sensitivities of the users. So, friends, in this presentation, we discussed about uh, uh, some of the copyright and ethical issues involving copyright, the licenses, plagiarism, illegal materials, pattern privacy, and cultural sensitivity. Thank you. After this video, we will have some more questions. After this video, we will resume to our lecture session. Uh, this is over to the W sir.
सर स्क्रीन शेयर करना चाहेंगे क्या हम लोग ऑडिबल टू यू सर अखिल सर इफ देर इज सम इशू एंड ही इज रिजोल्विंग इट जस्ट आई टॉक टू हिम अखिल सर हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग एम आई ऑडिबल नाउ यस सर यस सर प्लीज प्रोसीड ना एक्चुअली व्हाट आई एम डूइंग आई एम आई गॉट अ टू कनेक्शन या आई विल डिस्प्ले माय पीपीटी ऑन द लैपटॉप एंड आई विल टॉक ऑन द मोबाइल ओके या यस सर यस सर नो इशू नो इशू प्लीज प्रोसीड आई हैव द सॉल्यूशन या या ओके सर ओके ओके यस सर sorry for this uh, delay uh, now we all are techno care but um, sometime it happened yeah, now yeah. screen is visible yes sir it is visible clearly visible yeah okay so good morning to all dear participants and uh, thank you very much uh, to this uh, coordinator of this program particularly to madam and agase sir uh it is a great pleasure to uh, joining with you today uh, uh it is my love to meet always the academician and librarians and students because uh, we are playing one of the important part uh, important role in this uh, scenario of this new world uh, particularly called the information technology world and we librarian were so advanced uh, since uh, i think 90 uh, before 90 we started the our technology uh, journey by establishing the information and library network center implement center at gandhinagar since there we are so much uh, worry so much ad advance about the new technology whatever technology is coming in our field uh, and accordingly we uh, prepare ourselves uh, ready to uh, cater the need of the users uh, now the today's topic is the ethical and unethical use of online resources uh, this is one of the my favorite subject uh, uh, favorite in the north sense i am a expert on that part this is not a technology subject uh, but this is subject where it very uh, important uh, it uh, every person should have uh, some value in his or her life then and then only we can work uh, we can serve our uh, uh, our users very well now the what is the main uh, root definition of this uh, term the ethical so ethical is uh, we can simply someone say what is ethic ethics means law uh, rule of the action but this action is not by the rule of the parliament or rule of this uh, legislative assembly but this rule is something different than all other rules these rules are made by the god by the universe and accordingly uh, we have to perform it the rules we have to perform accordingly to by our heart so that is the not not a question we should follow all our guidelines all our rules made by the ugc all other uh, uh, law but as a by heart as a librarian we should follow what is right and what is wrong as part of the online resources access
Uh, sir, please unmute yourself. Hello. Ah, sir, yes, sir, you're audible now. Yeah. So the real definition of ethics is something different than whatever existing law or act available uh, in this uh, world. So ethics, uh, and ethics is something different. Uh, uh, we should follow in everyday life, whether it is private life or personal life. Uh, we should have our, our all work, our all behavior by deed or by uh, actions uh, or by spirit. Uh, our all work should be as ethical as world universe accept it. So here the question is how we should follow the ethical and unethical uh, 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 mechanism in our day-to-day -day use of the online resources. So there is a big question before the ethics also. The ethics depend on the politics, ethics depend on the social, cultural, geographical, and subjectivism. The most important part of the ethics is situation based. Sometimes every people say they are very strong in ethical, even that personal life, but uh, due to some situation, uh, they want to avoid that exactly what ethically is right or ethically wrong. And this is the question directly related to the online resources. Uh, sometimes students are so intelligent, sometimes students are so, uh, so ethical in that personal life, uh, but uh, uh, when the question is come the, as part of their exam or research or the, uh, that is the scenes line they have to uh, connect with uh, uh, their uh, uh, educational gain, the gain which is directly related to their exam or assignment, then they might sometimes hesitate what, is, uh, what should they do, whether should, they should follow the way uh, what uh, ethically uh, right or they should avoid this all the situation and uh, uh, do follow whatever uh, beneficial for them. And that is the reason uh, the cheating and unethical uh, part come in this uh, way. So situation is most uh, uh, very important part in the ethical way. If we can, if we can recall this Gandhi's uh, 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 definition of the morality or which behavior is right uh, in that part, we can say uh, Gandhi was saying uh, whenever nobody is watching you or nobody is there in your room or anywhere, and the way you behave, that is the, called the real moral, the real good behavior. So here the not, not a question ki what uh, uh, our teacher is saying, what our research uh, guide is suggesting, what other fellow student will say, or how, what marks we will get, whether our assignment will get rejected or we will get a good marks. Uh, you should put aside all the things, uh, but you should follow the, what is exactly right, uh, what is excel, exactly ethically good. That is the uh, things you have to follow. Now, what is the role of the librarian in this sense? Because the, we are in the mediator here, uh, particularly this topic is related to directly to user as a user, uh, what, should do, what should they access online and which resources are good, ethically right or wrong. But the above role is something different. We are in between, we are mediator, we are watching, we are controller of the library resources. So our responsibility on the, on the both side is very important. On the publisher side, uh, publisher put trust on us uh, and they sell that content, they open that content uh, in our library. And on the other, other side, user side, we, uh, we watch them, we monitor them, what type of resources, uh, online resources, how they use, uh, whether they follow the, all the ethical way or not. Uh, and that is the way uh, sometimes, if you might have observed, uh, there are a lot of online publishers, uh, when we ask them to set their um, content uh, trial access in our library, sometimes they hesitated. And what is the main reason to their, their hesitation is, you know, uh, they have a hesitation because uh, uh, they feel when we set our trial for the 15 days or one month, uh, to those uh, the core user means 5% or 10% user, 
they will download what whatever important content and they will keep that content in their pc and then later on they say oh now we don't want to subscribe this content uh, now we librarian should uh, think ourselves whether this is the right practice uh, ethically we should we should allowed our users to download this content for the future user uh with the mindset whether we will get this content or not get this content so uh, whatever we chance we got uh, uh in our library we will download and we will put this content our pc so later on we can use it sir so this is the main question start okay, what we shall we librarian should do in this situation whether we should permit them whether we should not permit them or that is the question of permission or not permission but how we can create a such environment where our users or our librarian library professional or they give full trust to publisher all the international community also the in our library neither library professional nor our user will not do anything unethically on their parts that is the reason so uh, this is very important topic sometime you people see okay uh, it is very simple ki whenever we uh, download the content we should uh, acknowledge this publisher we should not download systematically though the thing is not related uh, up to that level uh, now let us start uh, what is our particular objective learning objective of this session sir so we will uh, uh, already we have defined we talk something about the define the ethical and unethical code of online uses uh, my particular interest of this session i want to sensitize the librarians about the ethical issue because we are the core we are the controller the publisher put complete trust on us and accordingly to our trust they sell the content in the libraries now you know there are the various model of the online resources uh, there is a one latest model called the use and pay uh, uh, subscriptions uh, means they open all entire content uh, support the oxford university press have online resources they open the entire uh, billion or billion ebooks in our library and uh, at the end of the week or at, at the end of the month uh, they will see uh, uh, how much content your user have used and accordingly they serve the bill but now all these thing uh, all this trust between the publishers and uh, libraries and users uses is directly depend on the ethical issues how uh, greatly we follow the ethical part of this online resources access uh, how we will sensitize uh, there is a two part of the sensitivity first thing we as a librarian first we have to become the sensitized about all this ethical issue and accordingly the same way we have to sensitize our users also we continuously in routine practice practice we should sensitize we should uh, say our users uh, what you should do and what you should not in uh, in this online resources uh, sometime it happens our lot of users uh, Uh, they visit the foreign countries uh, as a part of their educational uh, assignment uh, conference workshop uh, and uh, um, when they visit the foreign institute library automatically the library resources are open for all the participant of their conference and workshop and um, this is not a routine practice but i can say sometime users bring the uh, some books in their pen drive and they hand it over to librarian that these are the ebooks uh, i have brought from particularly this foreign university but whether we should li we librarian should accept those all the freely downloaded books in our and keep it in library no because the books which were downloaded by that particular participant uh, which are only for his or her access only because he or her has already visited that conference or workshop but we cannot circulate we cannot give access of all this book to other users because the uh, uh, because the uh, Uh, legally we are not these actual authority users of that content which brought by this user from the other library so these are the part very impo important uh, we have uh, we should uh, uh, sensitize our users uh, we should always try whenever any demand come in the online access online resources part uh, we should always try to subscribe them we should always try to purchase those content uh, uh, for our library 
but we should never uh, show them this uh, any shortcut way or any unethical way to access those online resources so this is the main part uh, part of this uh, talk uh, uh, how we can sensitize our user and how we can sensitize ourselves as a librarian and accordingly we should uh, subscribe we should distribute we should disseminate and we should uh, give the access of our digital content to our users uh, the way we librarian we are giving the our library access to other ex users as a part of online um, um, uh, interlibrary law alone the same thing is working in our online access also but that access or that dissemination is limited to some part we can give to any researcher even any outside researcher that one article or one part of this book ebooks or uh, as a part of this research at, uh, activity but we cannot uh, disseminate share entire collection or entire journals uh, to any outside users who are not uh, uh, our users as a legally uh, and the last thing is ethics and open educational resources. Open educational resources is one of these latest trend currently. Now, uh, uh, most of the um, uh, organizations have started this content uh, in the digital format uh, and they are uh, assigning uh, disseminating the content to all other libraries. Now, the ethical issue started even before the one online part, the ethical issue started with this internet. Uh, ethics uh, uh, in internet ethics the main question was uh, how to access the internet uh, this is not our main uh, uh, we are advanced on that part uh, acceptable behavior code it is manual of what is acceptable online internet ethics affects everything we do on the web this is something different but our role is also connected uh, directly with this, this uh, uh, internet access now the um, ethical concern of online so ethical debate surrounding the internet on ipr academic integrity and proper information use this is the main use how we uh, should uh, uh, we should uh, respect the ipr issue while we are accessing our online resources how we can give the academic integrity academic integrity uh, is the part of this uh, um, uh, academic uh, originality how uh, uh, we are fair in our uses of online resources and making the online resources in our names we cannot directly copy and paste whatever online resources available and keep it in our name so ipr academic integrity and proper information use we should always respect whoever is author whoever is publisher distributor aggregator content provider we while using those online resources and when we when we cite those resources from where we took this original resources this is very important part because you know um, when you do any research based on your online content the next generation will follow their further research based on your research so if you will they try to refer your content and if you have not cited or if you have not acknowledged it properly from where you took this online content then what is the meaning of that uh, your research uh, in continuity in future so the proper information use of this content is very important essential part these are the ethical questions surrounding information technology, privacy, net neutrality, IPR, and online theft. No ethical challenges is online research with wealth of readily and publicly available information. The web has created new opportunity for conducting online research. Key ethical issues. Key ethical issues informed consent, the public-private debate, and uh, anonymity. So whenever you use any online content, uh, whether it is uh, um, um, purchase content or open access content, you should always acknowledge, you should always give credit to the original author or original publishers, uh, because uh, we cannot uh, avoid them because we have took the ideas from that content and how we can avoid them if the content is taken from these uh, other users. 
there is one important part in the ethical issue is the copyright issue uh, so uh, we librarian law know very much about this uh, how the copyright uh, issues getting so complicated in this today's online war, uh, world because in online world it is very easy to copy and paste and disseminate the uh, billion or billion online pages from one library to other or one li users to others uh, but uh, ethically we should not um, do this uh, we should completely follow the whatever code of conduct as a part of the copyright uh, library is an opportunity of obligation wider access is more information and leading books on we librarians should seeing uh, see this online thing as a opportunity for us uh, because uh, now the way we are working now the way we are handling our entire resources uh, in uh, institutions uh, universities and colleges uh, um, the role we see our wider important role in uh, libraries this all thing is depend on this latest technology but along with this uh, benefit we should uh, definitely give balance uh, to them and uh, constantly monitoring uh, the access trend of our users uh, here uh, i am not saying uh, 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 to see that privacy what research they are doing but uh, definitely we should monitor what are the resources they are using how they are using whether they are using whatever um, 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 purchase content quality content or authorized content we have uh, whether they are you directly accessing or just downloading and keeping all entire ebooks uh, or entire journal so you content in the laptop or in their personal for the future use so before we get any warning from the publisher side because there are the in a, today's uh, technology world the publisher constantly automatically with the uh, technology of uh, artificial intelligence they see uh, how the user is uh, downloading uh, whether it is now whether he or she is downloading systematically from if there is one journal journal published in 1950 until 2022 so user is downloading all articles all issue from 1950 to till date till date then automatically there is a question what is the meaning of downloading all the content because uh, for his or her research purpose there is no need to download the entire content they should only use access and finish their research and even the user of the library they should never worried about whether this content is available today tomorrow the same content will be available or not because the library uh, when the library sub start the subscription of the digital content then uh, i think uh, definitely the uh, content will always remain in the library mean this uh, renewal subscription or whatever so there is a note uh, uh, user should not keep any doubt and this is the thing which librarian should always uh, um, say to users uh, that there is a no need to do all the on all ethical um, things uh, on the online access uh, our library will remain always open the resources will always open when you, uh, uh, whenever you are the student of this particular university or college so there is no meaning to download uh, and uh, uh, keep uh, entire content in his or her laptop or pc so uh, this is the very important uh, constant monitoring controlling uh, is very important of role of li librarian uh, we have to follow in this uh, ethical part uh, uh, the thing uh, normally uh, uh, give the publisher publishers uh, warn them deny them block them so initially if we come to know if our any user is doing any unethical practice if our any researcher or anyone is doing unethical practice then definitely we should warn them we should deny them but ultimately if he or his she is not ready then we can block the online access of that particular users it is our moral responsibility we should not wait the action from the publisher side but even before the publisher we should uh, uh, treat we should act uh, ourselves uh, so uh, we cannot uh, um, we cannot uh, uh, give the chance to publisher whatever uh, if there is any um, 
unethical things come to in our mind so uh, even the before the publisher act the librarian can avoid them the librarian can uh, control them uh, otherwise if you will not uh, act if you will not follow this ethical practice uh, if you will not monitor our users access uh, then definitely one day uh publisher will block uh, the online access of that particular users uh, even or even the online access of, of our entire library also so before the things uh, uh, goes wrong uh, we should uh, be conscious about this all this part now ethical uses of uh, eir uh, electronic uh, electronic information resources uh, to mismanaging and misusing uh, these are the uh, as i talk these are the main two concerns uh, how we manage our resources online resources and how we are allowing our users to use them these are the very important part uh, and accordingly we should develop our uh, policies also uh, we should draft a one page or simple uh, uh, ethical policy or as a part of the copyright policy or as a part of the ipr policy we can say ipr policy of the library we can cover all this part uh, copyright um, plagiarism related uh, and uh, uh, what should they do and what uh, should they not do and also we can give assurance under that policy ki uh, ki you can uh, use this this content is always open for you so on positive way, positive way we can sensitize our users uh, and uh, that is the right way to uh, um, make them 100% ethically perfect uh, on that part of the online um, uses so uh, this is very important ki uh, instead of denying them uh, first as a uh, precautionary measure we should define our Uh, ipr policy covering all this part uh, so that will definitely help a lot uh, uh, to students now ethical use of the e resources uh, so these are the main uh, three part uh, keep we are using the uh, e resources uh, so what is our responsibility what is as a user as a researcher uh, how we can say this content we are using uh, uh, we have uh, ethically uh, uh, right uh, so we should uh, quoting the quote this content whatever you are using we too should uh, paraphrasing and we should cite uh, we should uh, acknowledge we should attribute uh, we should uh, give the credit to original content creator original content uh, um, author publishers and now the ethics and open educational resources uh, uh, the short form of the open educational resources uh, oer the educator should uh, incorporate ethical consideration here the uh, the thing is on the two part uh, as a as a user and as a creator of the online content also your ethical responsibility is not coming on the part of the users all but suppose you are the today you are the user you are the phd scholar or most of most of the academician or most of the librarian uh, they are the research guide they are the content creator so what is the ethical uh, ethical value ethical responsibility as a content creator so the same thing as a content creator also you should uh, incorporate all the ethical considerations your uh, e content should be always uh, as standard as possible you should follow all the mechanism you should follow all the standard just like uh, as a user whatever uh, e content you are creating based on that all the resources you should uh, incorporate you should acknowledge you should attribute you should mention all these uh, uh, resources which we have used as a part of their content creator in the bibliography so uh, now you can understood uh, uh, how wide this subject is ethics as a part of the librarian as a monitor ethics as a part of the users ethics as a part of the content creator so this entire um, uh, uh, scenario of the in content uh, in the all the part the ethical issues comes uh, then and then you can uh, always generate the quality content 
and this is the main reason you can see uh, now most of the publishers uh, they have completely shifted from this uh, uh, i cannot say the shifted but they have added uh, uh, the print uh, collections at uh, the same print books are available in the ebooks also because uh, they know the most of the international organization they uh, fully follow they fully give assurance to publishers uh, that there is a no question of if we will purchase the if we will purchase the ebooks and then there is a no need of the print books but uh, in india still we are waiting uh, ki how our publishers how our content will be ready to give our all our uh, print collection in the e format and that is the main thing we are facing problem today our most of the users uh, when they demand any e content uh, from our publication science uh, side we face uh, difficulties uh, to trace those content in the e format uh, so this is the main thing uh, we librarians should uh, uh, need to initiative we librarians should give uh, a full assurance to publishers to authors to researchers uh, uh, ki don't worry about all this part uh, it is our responsibility as a librarian we are responsible and we will take care of uh, all the content you will create uh, we will give uh, uh, appropriate uh, um, uh, back uh, whatever investment you have done in your research uh, by purchasing all this content uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, um, we can um, um, give uh, more uh, chances to them to uh, uh, create more and more in e content uh, so in this way you can say uh, how important role we will play in this part so what is the responsibility as a content creator in oer to fairness and transparency in attribution so see this is the first point the give the attribution is very important because i can say you cannot generate even any single word or single uh, sentence without getting idea from these others no users no author no publisher can say this is my own invention this is my own creation suppose you might have heard today or you might have heard the same thing when you were in the, your first standard or a primary school or secondary school but the always your ideas is based on the ideas of the others your research is based on the research of the others your creation is the based on the creation of the others that is a good thing your creativity is definitely is there you have added something new you have added something uh, unique you have made the original content the base content in this uh, more uh, uh, sophisticated way or more explanatory way but uh, your ideas your your work is definitely based on this uh, existing world nothing is new if you see if you will um, uh, if you will uh, go to beyond all this latest publication then everything will be definitely on the ancient literature whatever our ancient literature is available this entire universe entire philosophy entire science entire social science everything were based on this content so how you can say there is no need to uh, uh, to no need to give a, a, a attribution to others so this is the one of the important ethical part uh, as a part of the content creator the fairness and transparency in attribution faculty should appropriately evaluate the academic quality of the any oer oer they waste to use understand and specifically license allows to each research which and should not violate any licensing or copyright restriction so now there is a lot of question come ki uh, use information is available in the e format digital format lot of available in the google but when any user come in the library you can say go in the google and search and he or she can uh, fulfill his his or research no because the thing available on google it's not uh, exactly as quality as uh, as a part of his or research so the quality control is very important and this is the part of the ethical value also so whenever if you get any chance to create any uh, digital content then definitely keep in mind your content is based on that quality standard is or not 
there is no need to come no need to generate a lot of digital content but your content should be as much standard as much useful as we see from these um, uh, uh, many good publishers uh, including there are the uh, excellent publication industries now working in in the books format or uh, journals or theses uh, so we should keep in mind how uh, quality content we are creating so creation of the quality content is also part of this ethical uh, ethics so autonomy of the faculty is determined whether uh, or not to use oer should be uh, should be respected now the question is come uh, there is a lot of oep content is available oer content is available but whether we should we can force our user to you should you have to use this content only you have to refer these resources only we should not we should give a fully respect full freedom uh, to those faculty members those researcher research guide or student whatever digital content whatever content they uh, find uh, uh, very appropriate or con uh, quality content they are free to use uh, it so this is also part of the ethical value uh, we give, we should give them full uh, freedom to use this content but as a researcher or a research guide you can monitor you can see uh, you can uh, verify whether the content is quality content or not uh, but you cannot force any users any student so the things come in our library part also whenever any users come in our library we, we should not uh, uh, suggest them only particular those limited resources we should give them a view of the entire universe entire universe of the digital resources now it should depend on their knowledge or their guide advice uh, uh, but we cannot uh, say this is the quality content and this is not a quality content you should use if you will use uh, this content then you can uh, complete your work very easily or very fast uh, because this content is very uh, simple content uh, so this is also part of the work uh, ethical value how we uh, librarian uh, play the very important roles uh, in this part of the ethical ethics of the online access uh, no force to openly license material created for the course learning content or uh, assessment we cannot force our users our student uh, to download this content uh, openly as they wish we should always allow them as much as uh, they wish it should be completely depend on their wish oer must be respected in all aspect uh, of other oer creation of the all material we should give completely respect uh, whatever content available on, on uh, internet and whatever content uh, we create whether uh, the content is from any country content is from any type of users because they, as a researcher when we use the content automatically we can justify it with the whether the content is quality content content or not uh, so uh, there is no hard and fast rule or uh, uh, guideline to um, suggest our users uh, to what should they use and what uh, they should not so uh, oer is one of the important part in today's world uh, still there is lot of development is going on how to uh, uh, make this content as a quality content uh, how to make them standardize if you see our indian part uh, then there is a uh, swayam online resource is available uh, the link is available on implementnet site uh, there are many uh, open access content uh, now ugc is going to create uh, so our users uh, can use them Hello, audible. Ah, uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. So uh, uh, there is a lot of good uh, uh, space uh, in this part OER. Oh, yeah. So uh, my suggestion to particularly to librarians is there. Uh, parallelly, because the content created part is particularly depend on the fact.
Britain should always uh, uh, see how the latest uh, development is going on this part. Uh, so accordingly, we can uh, keep updated ourselves. Uh, whatever uh, new rules, new standard is going to come in uh, on this part. Uh, and OER will definitely uh, has a lot of issue related to ethical parts. Uh, because the most of the uh, faculty members, sometimes faculty members are hesitating to, uh, uh, to keep their content openly on uh, open access resources. And you might be surprised, uh, the main reason to put their content openly is to, if someone will copy the content uh, and he or she will uh, make the content in his or her name. So this is the main uh, concern, particularly in this digital world. So. Um, Accordingly, we should keep watch whatever latest development will uh, is going on in OER part, whatever new development will come, and how greatly we can uh, play our important role. How we can give assurance to academic world that uh, you don't worry uh, about this content, don't worry about this uh, uh, copy and paste. Uh, we will uh, definitely monitor your content. Uh, we will not allow, we will, uh, we will uh, make our user perfectly ethics. Uh, so there is a no uh, question will come to um, copying your content and waste yes your research. Uh, so this is the very important part uh, we librarian have to pay. Now, uh, just I want to highlight uh, when this idea came of uh, online or open education resources. So, uh, now you can see how UNESCO was worried about the things uh, in 2002. UNESCO forum has uh, decided this idea and how to create the online content uh, openly for the developing countries. Uh, and uh, now we see the result. Uh, now we see the fruits uh, of the effort of the UNESCO, which were made in 2002. So how uh, a long time it take. So we can say ethics is not a one day issue. Ethics is not the issue whenever you are doing your research or, or whenever you are doing your PhD. But ethics is a journey. Ethics is a long duration of activity. So ethics uh, part will, uh, I think it will take your entire career of life. Uh, then, and, then, and, then you can say uh, you have done something good in this part. So UNESCO coined this word in 2002 uh, as a part of the higher education in developing countries. The term was uh, open educational resources. Uh, encompasses teaching, learning, and research material in any medium, digitally or otherwise, that reside in the public domain. Your material should be reside in the public domain and have been released under the open license. Uh, there is a license provision uh, in the uh, online uh, content also. Now, uh, just who gives the license of the open access resources? So the open access resources license mechanism is called the Creative Commons. Creative Commons is the one NGO. And whenever you uh, write any journal or whenever you create any, uh, uh, open any online journal or any, any online articles, you can get a license from the com uh, Creative Commons. Uh, there are the various category of the license, but at least we should, at this time, we should at least understand the uh, open access is not limit, uh, lot, uh, not as simple, just uh, write anything and keep on the website. That is not the real meaning of the open access uh, because the, there is a lot of question may come when the, any content is available openly. Uh, quality, quality is the main concern with the open access resources. So uh, there are a the lot of agency and particularly this license given agency, Creative Commons. Uh, uh, they check whether your content is quality content or not, uh, whether its content is original content or not, whether its content is uh, uh, useful or not. Uh, and um, by checking all this mechanism, they give this license. Uh, so uh, this is very important to understand in this part, uh, open education resources and the Creative Commons. Uh, now, how the what are the different type of the license Creative Commons gives? So, uh, Creative Commons give the five type of licenses. Uh, it called the retain, reuse, revise, remix, uh, and the redistributor. So there are the various symbols they use uh, as per the, the license available. If the uh, open access resources Creative Commons license is available as a retain. Then you have a, as a user, you have a right to make, own, and control copies. You can uh, copy this content. Uh, 
you can download duplicate store and manage you can download open access control and uh, content and keep your near pc there is a no issue now you can see the difference between this open access content and the content we subscribe in our library in open access content content they have give you license to download and keep in uh, keep in your pc or laptop for the future use but the same thing uh, for the commercial content um, the content is accessible only during your period of that particular uh, enrollment as a student or as a user or as a faculty member later year you can not use uh, the same content <clears throat> so here the given the first license is written download duplicate store and manage the second uh, license they give as the reuse reuse the right to use the content in a wide range of way in a class in a study group in a website or any video you can access to openly access resources open education resources or openly access resources you can distribute the entire content among your class in your study group you can even put on website even on the video displays there is no restrictions there is no limitation related to copyright or anything so this is a really uh, important thing and uh, as a librarian for the librarian and uh, for academician why i am emphasizing these uh, uh, things because a lot of uh, development is coming in on this part in next few years so uh, that is the reason this is very important uh, to understand the type of the various category of the license so if you are any user come ki i want to uh, uh, circulate this particular article among my entire class or group or i want to display this article on our websites so you can you, you can see uh, on the what base they have given the license uh, so these are the category which uh, definitely will help you to understand this uh, mechanism now the third category is revise the right to adapt adjust modify alter the content itself the translate the content into another language see this is very important thing if the content is open access content is available under the open education resources or anywhere and if if they have given the license to revise so you can modify you can edit and you can convert th this content at per your users need even you have a right to translate those content also so it is very clear which content we can use and which content we can regenerate so the regeneration is very important part uh, under this license now the fourth part is remix uh, the right to combine the original or revised content with other material to create something new uh, you might uh, very well aware about the how uh, remix uh, music uh, created by the music world but the same same thing way we as a librarian also create our content in the remix way whatever online content available under the open access license and this fourth category license we can remix this content as per our requirement and we can display the content we can circulate this content to our users and the fifth category is redistribute the right to share copies of the original content you can redistribute the content not limited to you your users only but wherever you want to redistribute because the original uh, intention of the content creator is to disseminate uh, is her content as uh, possible as you wish so these are the five categories uh, license uh, framework uh, under the open access resources available um, and uh, uh, use the content open access content online content as per the these uh, rules uh, is absolutely ethical there is no question of uh, unethical on this part Uh, this is the creative commons as i said the creative commons is the one ngo non profit uh, organization which provide the uh, license uh, of your content uh, the main uh, uh, benefit to register our open access content under the creative commons is uh, 
it will give the, the symbol of standardization. You will get this uh, creative license content means quality content. So whenever we use, suggest our users also to what type of open access resources they should use, uh, though we definitely we try to suggest them to use the this open access resources uh, which are available, uh, which are licensed under the Creative Commons. Uh, so this is the one of the important things uh, 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 developing already developed uh, and we librarians should uh, uh, understand. Uh, and uh, let us try to get to understand our users uh, about these things. Uh, so this is the uh, last part of this session. Uh, uh, what is the role of our librarian in this all the ethical part? Uh, because the users, what happened to users? Uh, users come and go. They come in our college or university for two years, three years, four years, five years, and they go. Uh, they cannot just, uh, disseminate or uh, uh, teach the thing which they uh, learn. And there is a not uh, uh, advisable also to uh, say them to uh, uh, teach whatever ethical issues. Because we are not sure whether the every users, uh, the way he got, uh, he or she completed his PhD or research or any article research is based on all this for uh, all this standard practice or not but we librarian can uh, uh, make sure ki how ethically uh, we suggest them how we can suggest whatever best part whatever ethically right part to our libraries so awareness uh, to increase to disseminate the ethical awareness among our users uh, to accept the e-resources is very important part, uh, is very important work of our librarians. And this is the thing uh, we have to follow. Electronic or digital resource uses for academic purpose has been a massive incline over the past decade. You can see now uh, most of the research, particular I cannot say the UG students or uh, uh, PG student as a part of that examinations, uh, the, we can say the routine uh, examination part is different and assignment and research part is different. So the research part and assignment part is fully dependent on digital world. Uh, it is fully dependent on online access. So now you can realize how uh, important to uh, uh, to spread the awareness among our users about this uh, access of e-resources. Because the whatever users come in the library, uh, they might uh, not um, uh, good uh, in practice uh, about the uses. Uh, and if they have seen what uh, uh, whatever the open uh, whatever the videos available under the U YouTube, uh, then definitely those uh, uh, videos will misguide them. So before anyone else misguide our users, uh, we should take an initiative to guide our users. So the guidance should be more uh, uh, more more weightage oriented than misguidance. So in the research part, uh, we should not depend uh, only on the this guide of this particular users, a PhD guide or a assignment guide or teachers. But even before that, even beyond that, uh, whatever the thing which is related to directly related to our part, we should make aware of our about uh, aware to our users. Uh, with the things uh, universally follow, what uh, whatever best practices uh, followed in the Oxford University or Cambridge University or Harvard University, the same way we can teach, we can aware our users also. That is the different thing that uh, the things what they are uh, learning in the Harvard University and what our users are learning in our Nagpur University or any college in the Nagpur University, Nagpur. But uh, the, the overall idea they should develop in college or university level. So the, what good thing will happen if you will create the good ethical value among our users uh, as far as this online resources access, then definitely the, the, the idea, the the thing which you have created will help them in their future careers also. Whether they will give, again, they will give, go in the academic field or any other field. Because the ethical part of the online resources, the thing which is the IPR, it is not limited to library access only. 
IPR is very wide concept. Whether the after passing our college or university, whether the student will become even uh, why he is not start our uh, work in the field work also as a as a set curriculum. Even well, when he uh, 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 raise any fruit or any vegetables in his or her field, uh, then definitely the way you, whatever ethical part, whatever ethical value, IPR value you have created, generated among the student mark, that definitely that value will help in their field work also. Whether the person, whether the student will become the, any, any manager in the corporate world, but the, the, the thing, the ethical value of the IPR you generated in the class, the, the same ethical value will help in that professional work also, in the corporate world also. Whether he or she will become as a, as a faculty member, whether he or he, he or she will become as a, in the politics, suppose he become as a MLA or MP. So the way you created the ethical value and the IPR ethical value, Definitely, the ethical IPR ethical value will help in them entire lives. So you cannot say the ethics you created, you generated is limited to his or her assignment work, his or her PhD work, or his or her work or library access of that particular hours or particular day or particular years. But the things which you have generated, which you have uh, inculcated as a part of e-resources access, the same, same ethics will help in their entire life also. So now you can realize how this subject is very important and what are the important role we librarian play. This is not a very simple. This is not a limited to, okay, you should not a copy and paste and you should take a care of the copyright only. You should take care of the plagiarism only. So you, you should uh, uh, get good mark. The ethics of the e-resources is, uh, because of what is exactly available in the e-resources? What is the e-resources? E-resources means knowledge. What are, your, what are students doing with knowledge? Your student is collecting the data. Today he or she is collecting data. Tomorrow he will become the knowledger. And the, in, for the next generation, he will be a wise man. He will become the leader of this world. He will become the leader of this universe. He will become the leader of the entire humanity. So the things which you teach as a part of the library assignment, as a part of the library e-resources access, how value, how important your role in his or her entire life. So my thing is not limited to just teach you technically this is the copyright issue you should take care but i want to make really sensitive whatever my 28 to 20 year users are participated are connected in this session today so my interest is beyond beyond this session i am really i want to teach you ethical part of the resources by heart so if you will teach the resource, e resources access by heart, then I can say there is a never any question come among your users. Uh, he is or her country, he got the 50% plagiarism. He got the, this wrong mark. Even after getting the PhD, PhD degree or assignment, there is a no use of such PhD. Automatically, the things which users will do ethically, and definitely he will he or she will get the return of these ethical values by the way of the quality content users will also become the quality users quality students quality faculty members quality world so this is the very important this is the things uh, uh yeah this is the thing uh, we librarians should uh, always uh, disseminate, always uh, we should continue to keep, uh, uh, make aware of our users. In academic context, ethics refer to a plethora of moral obligation that one is bind to on several aspects such as the creating an author, at their work, presenting your own original work, uh, academic cheating. Uh, you should keep away our user from the cheating. Uh, and uh, uh, respect all our IPR issue. Now in conclusion, I can say what the message you want to take from this session or today's session. And I hope uh, uh, there should be a good effect of this ethical part uh, among uh, 
your uh, professional work professional work i say if those are academic uh, uh, members in these uh, sessions uh, and for the librarians uh, if we will create this ethical value among our users uh, then definitely the quality users quality content quality libraries and quality librarians there is a no questions quality is directly connected with ethics there is a close relations between quality and ethics if you might aware the proven research 20 80 ratio this entire world is running by those who are ethically strong 20% people even in your organization there are the 20% excellent people i am not saying 80% is not excellent but 20% is more excellent more sensitized so my humble request my humble interest is to how i can make how how i can sensitize my librarians academicians and students to become more ethical on the part of the whatever assignment whatever research work they are doing based on the online resources available under the libraries that uh, ethical part will definitely uh, avoid all your unethical parts so when you create the ethical automatically unethical will become a zero so the two day take home message is uh, give most the respect of individual rights to privacy copyright fair uses and originality in nutshell we should completely follow the ipr laws in our library not whatever written in the ipr act only but whatever the ipr related online universal treaties are there ipr related declaration is there whatever international as a human from any country any part of the way, world whatever they see whatever the good things uh, entire world is follow we librarians should also follow and make our users habitual to follow it so this is our responsibility and here the honesty of reference and citation no misleading and entry we should always say our users whatever work you do you should always give reference from where you have referred this uh, work so references and citation is very important part we should always treat uh, we should always uh, train our users our student with this uh, uh, habitual practice so definitely uh, that will help them no misleading entry in any research or any assignment uh, no one should say even after the 100 or 50 years ke uh, where is the original uh, original source of this particular reference we should not give a listing of the references just randomly we should not give the cites or references just so these 30 or 50 or 100 references every reference should have a connection with our content with our citation with the quotations then and then only you can say whatever resources you have referred those resources are these uh, ethical resources matlab your work is ethically right acknowledge in all respect whether it is one word whether it is fact whether it is statistic whether it is phrase big data essay or wall research whatever even 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 if you have referred any single word but you should acknowledge you should say them this is the right thing so acknowledgement habit is very important we librarians should develop ourselves when we are doing our work our research research related to libraries research related to as a part of the library education system and we should also train the same way to our users ki whether you have taken the one word one sentence statistic or any fact you should suppose in entire world if anyone is doing the research on this uh, orange so then definitely he or she should cite the nagpur because the all idea all the things all the business is 
uh, one way or other way is related to Nagpur. So the same way, you should always cite uh, Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm concluding in five minutes, okay? Yeah, so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to respect the academic integrity by deed and spirit. Uh, so this is uh, uh, one of the important part. So in conclusion, I can say in this session, the take home message is uh, we should follow, we should respect fully the IPR law. If we say IPR, then definitely copyright is directly related to library. We should fully, completely always acknowledge, attribute whatever resources online we have used it. We should always try to open access resources which are quality resources or which are resources available under authority uh, resources. Authority sources means authority institution, authority author, and the open access resources available under this uh, that uh, uh, license. Those resources we should use only. The resources which are available under uh, Creative Commons license. So, and uh, we should never try to pass the whatever resources available under our library, whatever the paid resources we subscribed beyond our authority users. So this is the things I want to say you. I hope uh, whatever base uh, I have understood this subject, uh, I try to say you something. Thank you. And we are taking this uh, 10 minutes break. Uh, and again, we will start our next session, how to avoid the plagiarism. Thank you, thank you very much. Over to Madam. Yes, thank you so much, sir. You very wonderfully explained about internet ethics, ethical challenges in browsing internet, the code of digital ethics, ethical usage of EIRS and OER in Creative Commons. We professionals, we should know which sources are copyrighted and which are copyright free on internet. Your words are going to be useful for us. On behalf of the organizing team, I express my gratitude to you for accepting our invitation and sharing your ideas with us. Uh, it is so indeed uh, taking you up to uh, By this time, I am sharing my video with you. Uh, participants, please come to the Yes, 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 sir, sir. Please, please take rest and then we will start. Stupid 
lot. Then what the heck is Copy, right? I'll tell you. Copy, right? Is a permanently fixed. The original work. What? A permanently fixed. The original work. In, uh, in, uh, in some form. But can be seen. Or heard. Oh. Now listen, this is important. Only the copy, right? Owner has the right to build their work. It's mine. <laughs> How can that be? That's not fair. It's for me to build a copy, right? Work without permission granted by the copy, right? Owner. And, and anybody who's foolish enough to threaten our copy right has broken the law. And we forget the one key thing you think whatever's so crucial the tiny detail. You better be able to pay for that. Copy, right? Permission. We haven't discussed the subject of payment. You can't get something for nothing, you know. But I don't have I'm it. not asking much. Just a token, maybe a trifle. Hold on. Back up. Are you saying this is about money? I'm sorry, sir. I don't have any money. It's extortion. I prefer the term capitalism. You hear that sound? It's the sound of your freedom. Fluttering out the window. <laughs>
Well, this is, it, it's just, oh my. Delbert, would you please explain how ridiculous this is? It's totally preposterous. <laughs> I'm sorry, you mind running that by me again. I... Hey, what the heck is that? Use. Doesn't that sound crazy? But they're, they're, um, limitations? On copy, right? Oh! Is it possible? Yes. Copy, right? Maybe. It's broken, but it's slippery. <laughs> And borrow a amount of a copy, right? Work to then I'll let you teach that guy a lesson. To be believed, there has been a child security breach. The great criminal regulatory you very much risk the government. It is my professional opinion that now is the time. But how do I know? Yes, it's a fair use. There are certain rules. God damn, I'm afraid. Use. Okay, first of all, it's the make. Oh. Done work. Arnold. Second of all, it's done. No, no, no. You. Arnold. Oh, and there is one more thing. It has to be something that doesn't change. The, the original works. In the marketplace. Pay attention, everyone. This is important. It's like I always say. Fair use is not a right. Uh, but what is it? Fair use is only a legal defensible position. And this is it's not fair. <laughs> Because this company, 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 company is intimidating. Anybody who takes a copy, right, work, if they're going to threaten you, do it properly. The point is, if fair use actually works, then movies like this one will have legal protection. And that concludes our broadcast day. What was that? I have no idea. And welcome again. Um, let me start with full join us and we will start with the second lecture. Uh, let me start with it. Hello, madam. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the theme of this session is how to make your research work plagiarism free. I request Lucky Sir to start your lecture. What do you say? Hello, friends. Yes, sir. Please Hello. proceed. Proceed. Yeah. yeah. So now we are continuing with our uh, second session. And this session is uh, how to avoid uh, plagiarism. How to do our uh, research uh, plagiarism free. <clears throat> so here I am not uh, want to show any shortcut, any technique. Just like uh, most of the open access uh, resources, uh, open access. Uh, the openly available video, YouTube video, they give a tips uh, how to 
make your uh, phd thesis or uh, articles uh, 0% plagiarism so my purpose is not uh, want to show you this uh, shortcut ideas but uh, what are the good way what are the proper ways uh, just i am sharing uh, my screen just bring it up right how is greening at this point so now this plagiarism is very big issue in india almost uh, all educational institute uh, whether it is uh, iim iit i sir nift central universities state university my screen is visible no sir slides are not visible ppt is visible na no no sir no? okay again share yes yeah the plagiarism is the main uh, issue nowadays uh, and student uh, including the phd guide uh, are more worried about how to avoid the plagiarism issue so keep it is not visible yeah just i'm i'm bringing it the student research guide everyone is worried me yeah, ani hmm. yeah now it is visible yes sir yes sir yeah the student phd scholars anyone guide they are very worried about the plagiarism and this plagiarism software you know very well about this uh, tunnitin but the thing is not uh, serious as uh, the people think if we know if we do uh, our work uh, as i said in our uh, said in our uh, previous presentation ethically right uh, then definitely there is a not uh, such question will, uh, will arise because the uh, originality is directly connected with uh, how you do your original work if you are doing your work originally then definitely there is a not a question of originality sorry thank you pani if you are working 
as per the as per the standard set by the academic community as per the standard set by the uh, research department as per the standard set by this uh, ugc then there is a not a question of uh, worried about the plagiarism the thing which is uh, officially known officially word ugc using for this part is the academic integrity academic integrity is also called the academic honesty here you can see the honesty and honesty directly connected with the ethics academic integrity academic honesty means that you as a student uphold the college honor code it means that you will be honest in your own academic work and report any violation of the honor code by other students see you have to follow the code of conduct and you have to also to report also whatever other unethical practice or honest practice followed by the others now who will report as a authority as a faculty member as a research guide they have a responsibility to report on honesty of their users and there is a various consequence of the unhonesty now what are the consequence what will be the consequence of the academic integrity integrity the negative consequence means fail an assignment you will be make fail in your assignment you will be fail in your course if your entire other academic score is good but if you are this plagiarism uh, part uh, the writing part uh, originality part uh, is not academically honest means you are you followed any unhonest practice under your research as far as the plagiarism is concerned then you will be fail in your assignment you will be fail in your course also even the explanate from the college you will be explained explained from the college your admission will be cancelled you will be debarred from this particular course so these are the negative consequences under the academic honesty academic unhonesty practice is available and what are the positive consequence you will get you will get good knowledge if you will do your research very honestly original research then definitely one day you will become the excellent knowledge per person you will be rewarded you will get a new skill you will get a new ability of critical analysis thinking you will get your self respect and a sense of accomplishment uplabdi so there are the lot of positive thing there are lot of good thing there are lot of good achievement if you will do your academic work honestly and when you will follow the academic honestly then definitely you should not have any worry about the plagiarism or any plagiarism related software whether it is meeting or anything else now the first question come in is mark in in your in is your mind standard up to what level plagiarism is acceptable and not acceptable now but before that you know what is the objective of our today's session so our today's session objectivity is uh, we will define plagiarism and understand the difference between plagiarism and tax similarity now please try to understand plagiarism is something different similarity is different in your works there might be a similarity but it is not a plagiarism plagiarism is not good similarity there is not a much issue but there is a limitation of similarities also recognize expected similarity and the factor that increase expected similarity what process to follow if plagiarism is detected now the what is the difference between plagiarism and similarity now plagiarism means 
द इंटेलेक्चुअल आउटपुट द इंटेलेक्चुअल वर्क ऑफ द अदर पर्सन सो इन अवर नेम दैट इज कॉल्ड द प्लेगरिज्म द एकेडमिक वर्क द रिसर्च वर्क इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द बुक्स जर्नल्स और एनी राइटिंग विच इज नॉट ओरिजिनली योर वर्क बट यू सो टू अदर्स दिस इज माई वर्क दैट इज कॉल्ड द प्लेगरिज्म and what is the similarity you use the other person works other person's idea other researcher work but you don't say this is my idea you acknowledge them you use their content their research in your in your work as a part of the your research as a part of your academic world because without uh, quoting or without citation or without reference of the other there is a no no one can say uh, i am doing the my research without any single reference or without any single citations even i anyone can not say my research is zero plagiarism means zero similarity zero similarity or is also create the negativity so the similarity will be always there we have to use the similarity there are there is a some unavoidable similarity but you have to cite them you have to acknowledge them you have to attribute them so this is the main difference between plagiarism and similarity similarity is not worry your your guide can understand what are the part of the similarity and what is the important of the similarity whether this similarity will be counted as this acceptable or unacceptable but plagiarism even i can say there is a single percent of plagiarism is not acceptable so the tanitin software give the percentage as a part of the similarity tanitin never say tanitin never say this is the plagiarism then it is say this is the similarity now you have to decide your guide have to decide your institute has to decide ki up to which similarity is acceptable which is good and you have used those similarity you have given the proper acknowledgement you have cited those similarity as per the standard set by the international academic community or not and if not then definitely guide will guide you further to make something the as per the standard cite this resources from wherever you use it and bring it it again so you have a some chance to make correction if you have used as a similarity but you will not get any chance for the plagiarism you cannot say this is my research is 0% research there is no plagiarism but you know your guide your expert professor they know everything from where you have copied how you have copied huh? in the first paragraph there was the para of the nagpur metro train inventions how metro nagpur metro train idea came but you have used that remand nagpur metro train idea report one paragraph in the first page and one paragraph in the half page and one paragraph in the last page with them the some modification you put the nagpur and the last and the uh, instead of nagpur you use the term oran city oran city oran city oran city means nagpur and instead of metro train you use the some another word instead of the mihan you use the some another area but there your original intention was to make a copy so such copy paste idea will never work even whatever techn techniques you will use even whatever video you will see on the youtube how to manipulate other people's work and bring those work in our name but that will never work properly even on today and tomorrow also will that will not help you and you might be surprised seeing this is very important point if you are seriously with the plagiarism issue even you have earn your phd thesis or any research work by hiding any plagiarism any if any institution will come to mind even after 10 year or 20 years then definitely you will be in the problem even you will become the professor with such plagiarism content you will be Ended from your services even after ten years or twenty years, 
So terrorism is danger or than, than the corrupt people. You can directly content, connect with the whatever corruption practice is going on anywhere and the practices of plagiarism. So I can say plagiarism, you should not give the less value of plagiarism as people see the corruption. So my, my trial will be what are the authority, authentic possibility to create your content so you can avoid the plagiarism, plagiarism as possible as much. And how can do your research as a plagiarism free research? Now, how my presentation will help you to understand? Then definitely this will little help you to understand the plagiarism, concept of the plagiarism. And I think uh, since last 10 minutes, you might have understood plagiarism is dangerous. It is something different. And similarity is different. The other software is showing the similarity. Similarity is not wrong, but there is a standard for the similarities also. There is a limitation of the similarities also, and you have to follow this or those original practice of the similarity. But you should never give chance any chance in your research plagiarism. How plagiarism occurs in the different disciplinary contexts? Important of the citation and reference. What is the importance of the citation in the research? Reference. What are the referencing tools? Strategies for the avoiding plagiarism. How to para, uh, paraphrase, summarize, and use quote while using others' work. So this is my uh, try to make you aware. Now I am coming uh, on the main part. part uh, there is always some question in the student mind. Uh, what are the turning in similarity? How much is too much? What is showing how much is too much? Up to what level similarity you can say is too much? And what does the similarity is acceptable similarity? Please remember here I'm using the word similarity. I'm not using the word turning. There is a no chance of acceptance of turning in the 1% also. So the similarity so turn it in similarity. Now here I am directly referring the uh, turn it in software. Middle uh, similarity software turn it in. Turn it in similarity of twenty percent and above is too much. Twenty percent and above is called too much similarity. So it is clear that there is a ten percent similarity is good, but any anyhow up to twenty percent is moderate. But beyond 20% 20, beyond 20 is too much because it illustrated that a fifth of your paper content was copied. What is the meaning? If your similarity is more than 20%, it means that the fifth percent of your uh, work, your research work is copied work and not original work. However, this varies with the universities to universities. It depends on the university. Uh. But with no universally uh, specified similarity score, the widely acceptable Turnitin process percentage is less than 10%. So now one thing is clear. There is a 10% is standard excellent similarity rate, but up to 20, it is good. But beyond 20, it is too much. It is not acceptable anyway. But again, it depends to university to university. Some universities might have a standard to accept it 20% to give them revised charge, to give them resubmit, or up to the 30%. But as a part of my session of today's session and the institute where I am working, I am working in the National Labor Institute. And I hope all colleges, even the school, they should at least follow the national standard. If you want to make our career, if you want to make our professional as standard as possible, then definitely we should follow all our national, nationally all people are following. I am not comparing in international. International people, I cannot say they are more, more excellent than us. We are excellent. So there is no question to what Harvard or Oxford is following. 
but we should always follow wall we should always follow what our national universities what iit iit nag iit triple iit nagpur is following or what iim nagpur is following we should also follow that standards so that is the reason i am referring those standards which are nationally accepted standard so 10% similarity is excellent 20% is moderate but not it should be not go beyond 20% now why they are suggesting because they are suggesting if the 20% similarity then definitely there is a 20 10% of the literature review part and all the things so automatically similarity of literature review and other part uh, the guide can understand this is not the not the similarity but it should be there in this our work so automatically if you exclude the literature review or other quoting part then definitely your research will become at the 10% original research so 20% means you are at the level of the 10% now what percentage on turnitin is is bad the turnitin similarity score is considered bad if it is beyond 20 30% please try to understand if you are your research is beyond 30% then there is it is it is very dangerous part as a researcher so anyhow you should not see or you should not try to see any other persons also with the 30% of similarity originality report the matching content is not cited and referred where the exact bait score varies with different universities anything beyond hmm. now what i will try to explain you again we are talking about the similarity 20% similarity 30% similarity but there is a some part of the similarity you can never avoid that will definitely come if you will caught other person then definitely it will come under the similarity there is a some general knowledge kind of question there is a universal effect if you are doing the research and if you are quoting the nagpur is nagpur is orange city nagpur is orange city nagpur is orange city then the tanitin does not know nagpur is orange city is the universal fact it will show this is the copy but originally it is not a copy there is no other word you can place replace in the place in the replace in place of the nagpur is orange city whatever whenever you have to write the nagpur is orange city you have to write it so it is it will not come under, come under the plagiarism but that is the similarity and there is a way to exclude those part of the similarity which are as a general knowledge or as a fact factual information so this is the thing we have to learn in this session ki how we can exclude those part which are we can not avoid anyway and that is also not come as a as a part of this uh, uh, in the maximum percentage but there is a mechanism there is a way to exclude those part uh, on, from the similarity module now let us go on the reverse part on originality we have to write our work as a original work then what is the unoriginality what we can say the unoriginality to so self plagiarism this is very dangerous part and most of the i cannot so say the most of the but many research scholars sometimes knowing and unknowingly they do this they publish one paper and the base on this one paper they publish many papers so under this many paper they say this is my own content they justify themselves this is not copyright because i am a copyright owner now you can understand very clearly what is the difference between the copyright and plagiarism to use your content copyrightly it is okay because you are the copyright owner but the same content used for the other research is also called the plagiarism so plag so self plagiarism is also not acceptable and this is also the unoriginality because the work we have done previously it is already published it is already disseminated 
and how you can disseminate the same information again and again so the first first part of this unoriginality come with self we should always try to self plagiarism this is very important part whatever article you want to write whatever paper you want to present you should again generate new and new ideas with the new language new framework that is the different thing if you are giving any lecture again and again in uh, under the same way but even even if i am talking this lecture today but after one week if you will hear with the same lecture then the my way of talking my way of thinking my way of idea might be different you cannot see the exactly similarity but even for a writing purpose writing the paper because the because the plagiarism issue directly related to the research work in the writing sense so you cannot generate your idea you cannot disseminate you cannot publish your paper and again and again in the different paper forms this is one of the basic concern of the plagiarism so unoriginality of self plagiarism now the second is the clone find and replace there are the many user they said just use the, the find out the synonym of that 10 10 or 20 words and just go in the word and use the command find and replace find the word nagpur and replace the word nagpur with the oran city so who will understand computer will not understand ki i have copied the nagpur because the, this is the new word oran city but there is a, you know there is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence know everything the artificial intelligence can create a, there are the many iits and ii ii triple iits there are the many students from the nagpur also they know what the student can what the student can do replace the nagpur word with any other words so you should never try to use this find and replace mechanism hybrid technology remix remix is not possible is here remix was per per permitted under this uh, uh, this uh, uh, open license category because the open access resource they give permission to use their content and remix and publish but that is also for the use purpose only not your to, to create this content in your name so here in the research part you cannot remix any content you cannot recycle you cannot aggregate or cuts also on originality but there is a mechanism there is a process how to cut why where is there references and citations also the originality but if you have proved the references and citation in the proper in the standard way as per the standard practice then definitely it will not come under this similarity or unoriginality is there you cannot create this reference in your name you cannot generate the quote in your name quote will always remain originality with this original author but you can use the same quote in your research as a part of the research that will support that was very important for your research that will give a link to users from one research to other research but you have to use this quote as per the standard uh, standard practice of the whatever tenet uh, whatever plagiarism software suggest in the references and citations also originally references are the copy we are using the same reference book author year in the all the books but you can use the references in your research which is not unoriginal but the referring or writing this unoriginal content reference in your material in your research is also very important common fact fact cannot be phrased paraphrased like the capital of india is new delhi so this is the fact you cannot para paraphrase this sentence so computer also understand or intelli uh, artificial intelligence also understand these are the common fact these are the common knowledge so when you use such phrases then it will not come under the plagiarism you cannot you cannot anyone cannot say it's a plagiarism content because these are the common phrases these are the factual information these are the general knowledge information and the as a question so these are the on originality content 
now we can on the, come on the point how to avoid plagiarism so again the title is saying how to avoid plagiarism we have to not avoid similarity we or anyone or any research guide or a, any institution is not saying you should not quote anything you should not reference anything you should not cite anything you should not use any general knowledge sentence in your research you should not use any data copied from the others those are the similarity but the thing is you should not use those content in your name you cannot say ki this summer nagpur was very hot and the environment of nagpur since last one week was beyond 40 to 46 degree and this is the my data you cannot make such claim because the how you have collected the data nagpur temperature was 44 to 45 or 46 because the data was based on the meteorological department so when you are using or when you are doing any research and when you are using the centers in may nagpur was the 46 or akola or uh, uh, gadchiroli was the hottest place in the maharashtra you should definitely give a reference of that particular sources otherwise even your 46 degree celsius sentence will come under the plagiarism so this is the main concept most of the user think plagiarism means not to copy the entire paragraph or entire entire pages if you will not uh, copy such part then the plagiarism no even the plagiarism will come with the only one word also plagiarism will come only with the simple data also but there is a proper mechanism there is a proper way how to take those content from the other resources in your research because without taking those content you cannot do any research so the taking the content from the other sources is necessary important and need but you have to cite that is very important issue point so this is the way how to avoid it how to make our research plagiarism free now these are the four point is the heart of this session if you want to avoid plagiarism you have to use the citation you have to use the quoting quotations you have to use the mechanism of paraphrasing and you have to use the mechanism of summarizing if you will follow this practice properly then i am sure your research will definitely become a plagiarism free research now what is the citations and how to cite that is also not a simple way you student and that is the reason in the phd workshop there is a phd research workshop or phd course work one month course work goes in every university when the new student enroll as a research scholar and under the there is a research course work our library part is very important part because we can show them we can teach them how to cite what is the citation how to cite what are the standard available under the citation what are the tools available under the citations in between if i can say there is a good digital tools available for the citations ready made tools and not etc so suppose you start your research today you are referring one book today just enter that book detail under that software and not title author you have to not arrange as per the standard practice so every day during your course your phd work your research whatever resources you come across suppose 50 books 100 books through the 100 books or 500 books journals articles report video clips conference papers workshop all the details as a routine you have to enter under that software and at the end of the completion of the your research work your project with the click of one computer click a computer will automatically immediately generate all this content and the standard 
format standard reference format so as per the standard reference format you can put this reference lead at the end of your research project work and give this citation under that particular text wherever you referring those citation so how how people will learn about this thing this is the role of the librarian we should teach our users we should teach our student how to use those standard technical software which are create automatically because the manually what happen during the course of four five years of phd work or research work it is very difficult what are the resources which you have used where you have uh, take a not uh, sometimes you forget about the year you sometimes you forget about the author name standard author name or so many issues will come so but if you will such uh, ready made available tools in the market then this will definitely help a lot uh, uh, to save your time and this is uh, what is the other important part is suppose you are doing your research you are today in the nagpur and tomorrow you as a part of your research where you visit uh, mumbai or uh, bangalore or even our abroad university foreign university so those research tools are available online means just like a gmail so wherever you will go you will open your uh, that uh, that uh, bibliographical reference tools format and you can immediately complete your entry suppose you university you suppose you visit the kudabax university uh, kudabax library patna and you refer one or two books which is directly related to your phd work even by sitting in the library immediately you can enter this bibliographical detail of books under your software so after entering the soft, uh, de bibliographical detail in, in your software there is a no need to remember what are the books you have referred forget about the all this the computer will help lot of so this is the positive positive use of the technology but the thing is that the well, all researcher they are not aware about the, all these things it is the responsibility of the well, librarians we should teach them what are the research tools available how to use them and then definitely they will use it so um, now coming on directly on our part the citations quoting paraphrasing and summarizing these are the four point which if you will understand this point how to use this point in our research work then i think definitely your research will be, will become a completely plagiarism free free research now but it is not easy of the citations of the quotations how to refer you have to learn lot of thing you have to understand the thing there are the many workshop many training program goes on this part if you will understand properly how to cite source sources how to cite quotation then and then only you can use the things properly and the technically it will work otherwise the software will not allow software will not see whether it is caught or caught or cited cited reference but as per the yet per the international standard why i am using the international problem uh, point because the most of the turnitin etc software are work as per the international standard so whatever standard they have set turnitin software or uh, any similar uh, uh, plagiarism software as per you have to prepare your research then and then only system will understand oh this is the quoted mark this is similar but this is not a plagiarism oh this is the citation researcher has given the citations so this is the similarity but this is not a plagiarism so when we you will see the your research matlab uh, turn it in report turn it in report will say the similarity 30% but if you will exclude your research guide will exclude or or as per the university practice as per the university norms whatever um, avoiding excluding uh, similarity when you will exclude those parts then automatically their your then your plagiarism will come as a 7% 8% or 10% it's a uh, the standard uh, pla plagiarism practice so even the your similarity 30% but your plagiarism is not a 30% your plagiarism is 7% 5% or 10% and 10% plagiarism is very excellent practice now let us come directly on the citation and the plagiarism how to cite the content how to citation the how to cite the resources to so exclude references means that tanitin will not plague your bibliography page as long as you have titled it as a reference 
if you have not given the heading of your reference page as a references or as a bibliography or as a work of work cited tanitin will not understand that this is the reference page i have to exclude this page so citation with this heading of the references and bibliography is very important and that is also as per the standard format tanitin will accept all the apa and mla practice so this is the point important now most of the research students say yes yeah, sir this it was a citation i have used the citation but even the computer is showing it is just a plagiarism but the question is come whether you have cited whether you have put it your citation as per standard as per the norms of that software that international practice you have given the heading of the site your reference as a reference bibliography you have given the heading of the reference as a references you have given the heading of your work as a work cites and as per the api practice api standard as per the mls standard if not then definitely the system will not understand it the computer will not understand it tanitan will not understand it it will show it is a plagiarism so whatever resources you are citing if you want to avoid if you want to not allow the software to treat as a plagiarism then the definitely you have to put those resources under the heading of the references under the heading of the bibliography or the works cited in accordance with the specified citation slide now the here the question is come now the tc things is very broad which demand in practice in practical knowledge here you can see now another thing come in your mind before learning the plagiarism as a researcher you should understand the bibliography standard also api standard mla standard how they are cite various resources and that is also not a sim simple nowadays you have to cite the book you have to cite the journal you have to cite the report you have to cite the annual report you have to cite the meetings minutes of the meeting you have to cite the newspaper cuttings you have to cite the institutional repository content and even the new edition you have to cite the video clip you have to cite the youtube content you have to cite the twitter you have to cite the facebook you have to cite this lot of resources your citation is not limited to books only so learning and understanding the citation of the apa mla or whatever other citation support like in our law library there is a oxford citation style oslo and the harvard citation style are the difference so the similar in the medical library there might be other similar other citation in the accounting there might be some different citation style in the mathematics there might be some different different citation style now you can understand how widely this area is now you can understand how important way how important role we librarian play our librarian work is not limited to traditional the book circulation issue return acquisition our role is playing very important role we should not worry about the digital world we should not worry about the digital world re replace will our print world whatever will happen our responsibility is going to increase and increasing there is a lot of lot of demand lot of expectation from our users from our authority from our principal from our principal from our vice chancellors even from the minister also they expect they, they don't say librarians there is no print books there is no requirement of the librarians entire world are accepted librarians is going to bigger and bigger library that there was a fifth law of the library library is growing organism definitely rangnathan was the very big visionary he see the vision of library on those 100 year back he was thinking the library on the space part but here we can spare the space in the computer part space in the in the in the in the digital part cloud part space is not limited to the library's physical space even the physical space is also increasing now students they say we do every activity in the library we want to do our assignment by sitting in the library we want to refer
uh, even the class teaching if there is a class teaching there are the more many many faculty members they said we want to sit in the library and we will teach our users so what is the purpose of that sitting in the library they say immediately we can we can refer the books in the reference section with the reference book from the phd sections so here i am not coming come here to teach you just to give the few a few example or few tips to avoid the citation to avoid uh, oh, so sorry to avoid the plagiarism but here i want to show you the in the depth the mechanism in the depth way how to teach our student properly all the technology all the research tool all the mechanism so those our teaching will help them to save their time and they can they can concentrate more on their original research work so this is the work exclude the references if you have put the proper heading of this reference section in your research work and also as per the standard otherwise computer will see, see computer will show it as a plagiarism content now the quoting and plagiarism you cannot do any research any research without quoting other there are the many quotation well known quotation you have to always use those quotation in your computer how you can do how you can avoid door quotation door quotation and make your research perfect if we library people are doing our research five how to five laws of dr rangnathan library science the father of library science without quoting of the five laws never possible we have to always the five laws of the library our uh, our, uh, our uh, library science father rangnathan and then and then only we can continue we can carry on our research so in the same way in any research you have to quote the content from the other part then and then only you can continue your research so now the now the quoting part has a different category there is a some part is the direct quoting sometimes you will want to include a direct quote from the sources your paper however you should use direct quotes springly and instead paraphrasing summarizing you are not doing any paraphrasing and summarizing you are not changing the original quote original quote can be never changed you have to use it if you if you will use as it is as quote then and then uh, there is a meaning of that quote otherwise there is the original meaning will lost so summarizing or rephrasing will not work here in the quotation part part you have to use the quotation as it is but there is a role there is a standard how to use this quotation quotation should be always used with the double, double quoted mark you have to use the double quoted mark and you have to give the citation link with the reference sections then and then only that quotation will be treated as a quotations not as a plagiarism if your quotation mark if is if your quotation is more than 40 words or more than four lines then there is a other way to quote them you have to do you have to um, quote this quotation long quotation under the specific indent format you have to leave the one inch space from the right side and one and a half inch space from the left side to quote these quotations if it is more than uh, 40 words so that's uh, for small quotations there is a inverted quota ma inverted uh, uh, inverted mark uh, double inverted mark is is possible but if there your quotation is more than 40 words or more than four line then you have to use the quotation text in the block quote that is the text you are quoting in all in intended format and that intended format at per the mla practice is 1 inch for mla and 1 and 1/2 inch for apa for both ap and mla maintain double spacing so this is the uh, um, practice you have to follow for the quoting the text that is a small quotation long quotation but the direct quotation you are not making any change from this quotation you have to quote this quotation as it is 
Now the third part is paraphrasing and plagiarism. You, you can, as I said earlier, there is a no research is, no research is we can say is the, without any base of research. Nothing is new. Everything is dependent. The universe is, you know, it's, a, it's a dependent on each, each other. Even the Sanskrit quotation is there, the Jeeva Jeevasya Karanam. One living being is depend on the other living being. Other living being is depend on the other living. Normally, we people, we, we human people are mostly depend on the natural resources, natural environment. So, in the research also, your research is based on the research already carried out. So, if you are doing your research based on these other ideas, based on, based on these other research work, then definitely you have to use those ideas. But here, you are not using this content as it is from the previous research. You are paraphrasing this original content. Now, what is the paraphrasing? When you paraphrase, you say something in different words. The concept is same. The idea is same, but you are presenting the same concept in different way. Now here you can understand. So but today I'm presenting this, this uh, 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 session present on the avoiding the uh, uh, plagiarism free research. But originally I have taken this idea from the many resources. I've seen the many videos, I read, read a lot, even on based on my own experience. But this content, whatever I'm, I am speaking, it is not my own content. Thus, the, the style of presentation is different. My words might be different. My idea might be different. My, my formation might be different. But my original content is coming from the somewhere. Even the picture here, you see this lady, it's I have taken from the somewhere side. That is the different thing in the presentation presentation in the PPT format. I have not given the citation because I am not publishing anywhere. But otherwise, I should cite from where I took this PPT or I took this paper. So, but the if you see the my my PPT, my PPT is I prepared based on the content of the other other PPT or other material. So this is called the paraphrasing. You read a lot of books, you read a lot of resources, you read many expert people, and based on those expert ideas, you prepare your ideas, you prepare your content. That is the, called the paraphrasing. And if really, if, he, if genuinely you, you, will, you are doing the paraphrasing, then I think, then definitely it will not come a plagiarism. But even in, in, your, in, in your paraphrasing part, if you will use the technique of the find and replace, then definitely computer will catch you. Computer understand it. And particularly after coming this artificial intelligent technology, they immediately catch your idea from anywhere. You will not realize. Recently, I visited one, uh, one uh, uh, very big mall in Nagpur, which is there in front of this medical, uh, uh, medical uh, civil uh, hospital. It's called... Uh, I forget that mall name, but when I enter in the mall, immediately my mobile started getting the various SMS, various messages. I getting the message for the big basket. I get a message from the big bazaar. I get the message from the real friend. I get the message from this uh, um, uh, this uh, other big uh, uh, store of metro footwear, pantaloon. This is the scheme. This uh, available under this uh, uh, discount. There is a big new collections. Now you can realize how the computer, how the system came to know that now I am in this mall, or I am not near to this particular showroom. I want to say you the how today's technology, how fast they are working. Even the geography, I mean, geo uh, connections with the, my mobile tracing, they. Uh, identified immediately ke, now I am under um, now I am around this mall. So the same way computer will understand also how you have thinking or how you have copied the content. What are the techniques you have used to avoid the 
superficially avoid this uh, plagiarism, but originally it is not uh, your content. So you should never try to uh, cheat this, uh, um, your guide, your institute, because the technology will never allow to cheat you now. Technology say, say you both, technology say, show you the way to cheat also, and technology on the other part, technology way will catch also. So which is the best practice you have to follow? The best practice you have to follow, which will create your knowledge, which will create your skill, which will create your uh, excellent award, which will create your content is this original content. So the length of your paraphrase text will be approximately the same as an original. Suppose you have read the one paragraph of any material, and if you are paraphrasing and you are re rewriting those content in your in your word, then definitely even I can say you can write two pages content based on the one page. Because the one page you have already read, and there are a the lot of existing idea in your mind. So based on the based on your existing idea, your existing knowledge, and based on the whatever you read. You can mix those content and you can create the new content even the more than the original content. Now you can understand how it is good or how it is it is excellent practice uh, to read the content, to, re uh, um, to refer the content and based on that content generate the new, new content. Then automatically there will be a note, uh, any question come on this uh, plagiarism part. So, you cannot uh, uh, worry about this uh, making the content shorter, but if you re paraphrasing the content, then definitely your writing content will increase. It will not never get a decrease. The properly paraphrasing, you must uh, change two things. In the paraphrasing part, uh, these are the two important things you have to always uh, make uh, in your mind. The language of the original source. You should change the language. Here I'm not saying that change the language means English to Hindi or English to Marathi or Marathi to other language. Language changing means if you will generate the original content, the toning, the way, the style of the language will automatically change. Every person has a unique style of writing. Every person has the unique style of language. And that is the reason you might read, you might uh, um, hear the thousand of the thousand uh, speaker or thousand of paper, but there might be a few five or 10 papers or few speakers. You will say he speaks some, you speak, he speaks something unique. Even the repetitive, repetitive content, even there are the many, many, many Bhagavad Kathas which are there. You will hear, hear the hundred Bhagavad Katha. But in every Bhagavad Katha, the Katha is same, the content is same, but the presentation style is something different. Why that is different? Because the, the original Bhagavad Katha speaker, he, he or she read this original content and presented this content with his or her own creativity, in his or her own language, in his or her own structure. So the same principle will apply in our research part also. You should read everything. You should prepare a note. You should prepare a, a, a detailed noting. And based on your reading, even you should use, you should read repeatedly. In there is a Sanskrit, there is a one nyaya is called the Pishta Pishan nyaya. You should read repeatedly. Even in a literature, literature review, you should read one article twice, thrice, four times, on your Akra time also. Eleven times you should read it. If you will read more, then definitely you will generate your content, original content. When you get full confidence, yes, I understand this original sources, original things, original resources connected to your material sufficiently, then try to write, rewrite those content in your, your, in your words, in your language, then definitely you should not worry about the plagiarism because now you become the original create a regenerator of that content in your language, in your structure. So this is the original, this is the important thing in paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is one of the important part of to avoid this uh, plagiarism. 
but there is a technique there is a way how to paraphrase then and then only you can do it summarizing and plagiarism you can read the entire article and summarize those content in your words so summarizing is very important but summarizing is different paraphrasing is different summarizing is just like uh, review articles paraphrasing is not the review article paraphrasing in you are writing the entire content even more as it is now these are the two important note uh, at this of end of this session we understood very well how to avoid the plagiarism citation is important part quoting is important part how to quote there is a various method there is a very technique there is a standard then paraphrasing part how to paraphrase for the paraphrasing is the core part of your research writing but you should read lot and accordingly you should write then and then only you can generate regenerate new content as per your not and last was the summarizing but the important part in this plagiarism and research writing means that when you paraphrase you still must cite the sources of the information or ideas if you did if you do not you may be guilty or plagiarism now many people many researcher what they, uh, they think ki uh, i have read this i have researched i have referred those particular resources but i have written in my language so it is okay you have written in, in your language but still you have used it you have referred those idea so whatever even those idea you have referred whatever word or fact you have referred you have to always cite those original resources this is very important even the paraphrasing not only in the quotation quoting that part uh, re referencing citation is important but even in paraphrasing and summarizing also referring the original content is very important otherwise what will happen in the summarizing and paraphrasing if because in summarizing and paraphrasing the entire sentence matching will not come but there are the lot of word matching will come so if the computer will not get the citation of reference of those word then it it will treat you as a plagiarism but if you will cite those original resources then it will show as a as a cite as a similarity but your research guide or you at per the your, your university policy those the sentences or those words will not come under the plagiarism and there is a in turnitin software there is a 10 or 15 word similar word uh, avoiding uh, option is there so whether you caught the you you use the uh, original quote as it is whether you use at the paraphrasing part or rather use at the summarizing part but you should always try to cite the original resources this is the one of the important practice again if i can re re refer my previous session this is ethics of the researcher also so ethics will work in the broad part whether plagiarism will detect you not whether plagiarism will give you the 5% standard plagiarism report but if you will not refer those original uh, sources then you are again doing the unethical practice so please try to avoid plagiarism and unethical both then and then you will become an excellent researcher so this is very important you should always try to cite even those ideas even those word even those data even those part uh, phrase there is no need to when you refer any entire uh, paragraph then and then only you should uh, cite or refer you should cite uh, every time uh now this is the end part again this is the take home message five ways to avoid the plagiarism cite your sources to avoid plagiarism this is one of the important practice one of the standard practice never forget citation citation citations and particularly for the research purpose you should always cite and you know there is a value of the citation when you cite more and more resources na then definitely the original guide or those who will refer your 
uh, research they will uh, see you how broad how how widely you have referred the, those other resources so referring the those other resources is the good practice is the good uh, is the quality mark so citation is the automatically come under the quotation and the quality mark and that is the reason when you see these uh, any quality article you will find uh, many many re reference uh, resources but again you should never re uh, refer any never give reference of any resources if you have not uh, used it just to give a length increase the length of the reference is purpose you should not give the reference but if you have already used those resources those sources then definitely you should put those resources under the reference part use quotation marks to reduce similarity quotation mark in double inverted comma with the reference with the citations if those quotations is more than 40 word or more than four line then definitely use this uh, special uh, quotation uh, quotation mark uh, under this uh, spacing uh, indent format the, that is the different format paraphrase thoroughly to remove plagiarism you should completely your fully research work your entire research work should be based on the paraphrases paraphrases will help you lot it will increase your real reading habit it will increase your real understanding of research work and that understanding that knowledge will help you will always remain with you life long gaining really quality gaining standard gaining and avoid copying word to word never try to whatever sort uh, uh, three ticks uh, available under the view uh, youtube videos never try to copy and paste word find and replace mechanism so this is the take home message always citation always quoting the original text good reference citation standard reference citations excellent standard reference citations use the reference tools available online so there will be no chance of uh, uh, any any error any uh, for forgotness or that will save you a lot of time use the best uh, practice of paraphrasing develop your practice as a paraphrasing learn lot of it and this is the some of the important things you can start learning as a initial phase of research work means first the six month or something and that is the reason reason universities and ugc and most of the institution they suggest this first the six month as a as a offline offline on campus practice full time practice for the researchers to learn all the things and here the librarian plays very important role how to uh, how to how to train our users with all this latest trend latest technology so users can understand users can do these things very well thank you thank you very much to all these uh, librarians and academician it was a great pleasure to stay with you uh, with you and share whatever my little understanding with this uh, to uh, uh, area thank you thank you thank you to organizer and thank you to madam thank you to agassi sir and all the participants thank you to all thank you so much sir librarianism has become a threat for our academicians as there is growth of information on the internet there is also check if we are copying others material or creating our own material sir has elaborated the concept of plagiarism various kinds of plagiarism clone remix hybrid paraphrasing etc sir also told us about to me how to make our research not plagiarism free and how to cite our work Uh, on behalf of the organizing team, I am very grateful to you, sir, for your participation today.
Thank you, Lakdir sir. Thank you very much.